The West has huddled together to defend itself on Afghanistan. What about Afghanistan's neighbors? Are they looking to put up a coordinated response? Or is it still each country for itself? Let's look at what the developments are telling us. Earlier today, Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, held a telephonic conversation with the President of Russia. This phone call lasted for a good 45 minutes. What did the two leaders discuss in these 45 minutes? A host of things. But of course, the situation in Afghanistan was top priority. It topped their agenda. Both Moscow and New Delhi have been rather tight-lipped about the details of the call. All we have is a tweet by Prime Minister Modi, but it doesn't say very much. The timing of the phone call, though, tells you the story. It comes right after the Russian president rejected the idea of sending Afghan refugees to Central Asian nations, indicating that such a move would be a threat to Moscow. Putin reportedly said, and I'm quoting, I do not want militants showing up here under the cover of refugees. These are concerns that India shares with Russia, even if unofficially. India is currently undertaking a complex mission to evacuate its citizens and Afghans in danger. This mission is called Operation Devi Shakti. It was launched on the 16th of August. It has led to the evacuation of 800 people so far. This includes Indian citizens, also many Afghan Sikhs, Hindus and Muslims. For India, which took over the presidency of the United Nations Security Council this month, this is a moment to demonstrate its leadership, to rescue Afghans in distress. But India is also mindful of the security concerns as the situation develops. The penetration of the Taliban ideology, the rise in extremism, these are serious worries. The American weapons in Taliban hands also pose a challenge for India. They could make their way to Kashmir via Pakistan. We've been saying this for a while now. Now the Indian Army has confirmed this. Top Army officials say that a large number of American weapons captured by the Taliban from the Afghan army could end up in India. And before this happens, these weapons would be used for violence in Pakistan. This is the Indian Army's assessment that American weapons in Taliban hands would first create, quote unquote, havoc in Pakistan and then be smuggled into India. Does Pakistan see this threat to its own peace or whatever is left of it? Well, it doesn't. Pakistan is still high on its obsession with Kashmir. It hopes to use the Taliban to take over Kashmir. And this is not a figment of my imagination. This is a quote from a Pakistani lawmaker. They're saying it in so many words, and that too on national television. Neela Mirshad Sheikh is a leader from Imran Khan's party, the Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf. In a television debate, she unabashedly admitted to Pakistan army's close ties with the Taliban. And she said that the Taliban had promised to help Pakistan capture Kashmir. You have to watch this. Taliban hume kehte hain hum aapke saath hain aur inshallah wo aake hamare sath Kashmir fatah karke denge. Ye kisne aapko koi WhatsApp aaya hoga ke Taliban aapke saath mil karke Kashmir azad karayenge? Waqai aisa koi khwab dekhti hain aap kisne dikhaya hai? Inshallah. Ye kaise kisne aapko bataya hai? Aap 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 news aapko pata hai aapne I can't say if it's a WhatsApp forward. But ever since the Taliban have re-emerged, Pakistan's wishful thinking on Kashmir seems to know no bounds. Meanwhile, pro-Taliban propaganda has intensified. These are images from the Jamia Hafsa Seminary in Islamabad. They recently organized an event to celebrate the Taliban's comeback. This event was attended by children. They were too young to tell right from wrong. And this is what they were made to do. Hold placards supporting the Taliban and sing Salam Taliban, a song hailing the Taliban's victory as a victory of Muslims the world over. I must warn you, it's unsettling. We're not sure if that would make the Taliban happy since they consider music and songs haram or blasphemous. But that's besides the point. The point is, things have gone completely crazy in Pakistan. They're making young girls sing praises to a terror group as women in Afghanistan run for their life. Take the case of Ariana Saeed, one of Afghanistan's most famous singers. She fled Kabul as soon as the Taliban took over. Here's what she has to say now about Pakistan's role in supporting the Taliban. I do blame Pakistan, she says. Over the years, we have seen videos and evidence that Pakistan is behind empowering the Taliban. Every time our government touches the Taliban, they see identification 
and it would see a Pakistani person. So it's very obvious that I blame them and hope that they back off and don't interfere in politics in Afghanistan anymore. Back off and don't interfere. Well, these are words that Pakistan has never understood. And now they see the Taliban's rise as their own victory.